Chapter 19 has some excellent um, tips and strategies for arguing, but what I really want you to focus on as you read chapter 19 and work with the information there, I really want you to focus on how it's going to relate to your analysis paper. Because essentially, um, as you should have figured out by now, when you analyze something and you write about it in an essay, you are actually arguing. So how exactly does arguing relate to analysis? When you make an analysis, you, you come to a conclusion, which is your interpretation. When you want to explain your interpretation, you have to prove that it is valid or plausible. By doing that, you are arguing. So say when you're reading um, a short story and you find meaning in it and you tell a friend about it, they're going to say, well, what, what makes you think that? You're going to have to list out reasons and you're going to have to support your idea in that in and of itself is an argument. So as you write your analysis paper uh, this quarter, you need to be arguing at the same time uh, that you're analyzing. So again, you're going to analyze the story, come to an interpretation. Your essay then becomes an argument supporting and developing that interpretation um, of, your, of the story. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So the first thing that you need to do is assert your thesis. So hopefully you've um, also figured out by now that a thesis statement is extremely important when it comes to any type of essay, but it's also particularly important when writing an argument, or in this case, an analysis essay. Uh, your thesis statement needs to um, contain only one main point. It needs to cover the main point that, you know, encompasses your entire paper, uh, it's, a, it's an extremely important sentence or two. So you want to make sure that you're still working on improving your thesis statements um, so that they are effective. I know that they can be really, really difficult um, to get the hang of, especially when it, most of them are just one sentence long, but it can be a really tricky sentence because it does such a big job in your essay. So um, you work so far with relatively um, objective thesis statements. So now you have to make your, make your thesis statement assertive. And by doing that, you're presenting an argument. So there are five different types of um, argument that the textbook covers. Uh, please read all of that information so that you have a good background. But the one that, of course, you need to focus on is the story analysis and um, and what type of argument that is. And essentially, it's just um, an argument that focuses on a specific element of an essay and why it's a, or an essay of a story, poem, whatever, a creative piece of work uh, and, and what it means, what's significant about it, why it's important, things like that. So this is the type of argument that you're working on now. It's not an opinion. It's not your opinion of a piece of uh, literature. It's an analysis of it. Um, it's also not a policy. You're not evaluating the short story that you're working with. You are simply analyzing it and then developing your interpretation of it. Okay. So to make your um, thesis statement arguable, you want to make sure that it's not a state of fact. It's got to be something that can, again, be argued. So you don't want to just simply state something about the short story. Um, that that couldn't be argued against this. Somebody couldn't say, well, what about this? So you're not stating a fact. You don't want to state something about the plot, for example. You want to make an interpretive um, statement that you then have to support in order for someone to believe you. So make sure that you are writing a thesis statement that presents an argument, something that can be argued and something that you have to prove in order to get your reader to believe you. No statements of fact. Also, you want to make sure that your thesis statement is very clear, very specific, and very precise. You want every word to be doing a job for you. You don't want it to be filled with a bunch of fluff because that's just going to confuse your reader. So you really need to hone in on the one main idea that you're trying to make in your essay and then you don't deviate from that in your thesis or even in your introduction. You really want to make sure that you start your paper off very focused, 
you know, give some, you know, context within your introduction, but your thesis statement has to be very specific as to what your paper's about. Otherwise, um, it has potential to confuse your reader. So again, think about the exact point you're trying to make and make sure that your thesis statement only mentions that one overarching idea that your entire paper is focused on. And if you don't have one, you need to go back to your paper and fix that. Okay? So if you have multiple big ideas that you're discussing, you're not focused yet. And that's what you need to um, either fix in your paper or use your thesis statement to tie all together. It can go either way. Uh, more than likely, you're going to have your thesis statement uh, set up first because that's your idea. You read the story and you think, oh, here's my idea. That becomes your working thesis. And then you can change it as you start drafting your essay. But you want to make sure that they line up. If your thesis statement is off from what the rest of your paper is saying, you've got a big problem. Uh, not necessarily difficult to fix, but it's a big problem. Uh, one that you're definitely going to want to give attention. Um, also, if you're too vague in your thesis statement or even your introduction as a whole, your reader's not going to know what you're talking about. You want to get your reader off on the right foot, understanding what you're saying, understanding where you're going in your paper, and so on. On the other side, if you're too broad and have too much information going on um, in your introduction or thesis statement, your reader's going to be lost as to what your focus is. So you can't be too vague, but you can't be too broad at the same time. You've got to find balance in between. Um, so yeah, it's fun, isn't it? It's, it's, not, it's not always easy. Uh, and lastly, you want to be direct and you want to be assertive, but remember that assertion does not mean aggression. You don't want to be up in your reader's face. You don't want to um, be unbending um, in your thesis statement. You can be direct. You can have confidence in the language that you use, but don't be a bully about it. You could also say um, perhaps or or maybe things like that, little statements that help to qualify your thesis statement and kind of bring it back from being too assertive. Okay, so you want, again, you want to be direct and clear and confident, but don't shove it down your reader's throat and you know just assume that you're right and there's no arguing with what you have to say. You don't want to you don't want to write like that. So moving on, um, the other portion of the chapter that I'm asking you to read is all about how do you support and um, and reasons within your paper? Because this is where the argument comes in. You have a statement, thesis statement that says, this is what's happening in the text. Then you use the rest of your paper to support why that's true. So uh, as you read in um, the analysis chapter, the number is, uh, I think it is at chapter 10. Do, 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 looking, whatever. The, uh, yes, it is chapter 10. Woohoo! Brain's not totally messed up today. Uh, so in chapter 10, you read about because statements. These because statements help to form um, some of your support. So if someone were to say, um, why do you believe this about your story? You would say, because blah, blah, blah. Those become your reasons. You can use those in your paper so long as you keep yourself out of it, if that makes sense. So you're not going to say, Bob asked me this question, and here is my answer. You're not going to write like that in your paper. You are simply going to objectively use those because statements as reasons to support your thesis. Just remember to stay objective and not narrate and keep yourself out. Um, all right, so moving on. There are multiple types of support that you can use in any given argument, but because you are writing an analysis essay, it's kind of limited in, your, um, in an analysis. And I'll explain why. So examples, you might be able to use examples. And if you do, make sure that they are typical as opposed to exceptions to a rule. Um, Perhaps, I, I don't know. I don't know what you could be writing about. But examples are a valid form of support in, um, in an analysis. Statistics, maybe, but probably not likely. If you do use statistics, make sure they're up to date and clear and relevant and accurate. Otherwise, it's going to undermine your credibility and your reader's going to go, uh, they can't use statistics properly. I don't know that I can trust this person anymore. Uh, and really, that goes for all of your support. 
you can um, reference authorities in an analysis. I don't want you to because that means you'd be having to use outside sources. So you could do that, but I don't, I don't want you to in this class. But authorities um, could help, you know, create context, help support an idea that you have. You're just taking a different stance on it, that kind of thing. Uh, anecdotes are personal stories that relate to um, your argument. I certainly don't want those um, because I don't want you narrating within your essay, but sometimes it can be very valid. Say you're writing a paper about, I don't know, gun control, and perhaps you have a, a specific story or a friend has a specific story that you can enter into your essay to make it stronger. That's an anecdote. Not exactly appropriate for this essay. This is what is the most important for this essay, textual evidence. This is when you use quotes and summaries from the primary text that you're working with. So in this case, you're working with um, William Carlos Williams' short story. So you are your main form of support for the use of force is lines and um, you know clusters of words from that story to support your point. You're doing a character analysis, right? So if you're analyzing the doctor, you can use, you know, things that he says to the little girl or to the parents or what the parents are thinking about the doctor, something like that. That is the support that you are going to use to develop your um, thesis statement and your argument overall. Okay, so make sure that you use very relevant uh, quotes and summaries. If they're not relevant, your reader is going to be going, uh, why did you use that? Hmm weird. And they're going to start, again, questioning your credibility as a writer. You don't want to do that. So make sure that they're relevant. Make sure that you explain them. Every time you have a quote or a summary or a reference to the text in any way, you need to explain it. Do not leave that up to your reader to figure out. Don't put a quote in and then move on to your next paragraph. That means that you're A, letting the quote doing your writing for you, and B, you're leaving your reader hanging as to what they're supposed to get from that quote. So make sure that every quote is introduced in some way. Don't just throw them into your um, sentences standing by themselves. You need to introduce them appropriately, but then you also need to explain them so that your reader knows what they're supposed to know. That's your job. Uh, also, Again, reiterating the integration. You want to introduce them somehow. So-and-so says. I mean, it can be as simple as that, but you need to work them into your sentences appropriately. And um, a great example is on 617. It's a couple paragraphs um, from a, um, a student, I believe. Yes, so it's from a student essay. Uh, but really look at that um, little two paragraph cluster on page 617, it's right at the very top, uh, and look at how they use references and quotes. They're using paragraphs, you don't need to do that, you need to use page numbers, that's about the only difference. Otherwise, they do a really good job of putting in quotes and references to the text and making it very seamless within their own writing. So do your best to use that as an example uh, for your own writing on how you can get um, ex, um, quotations and summaries within it. And really, uh, you should have at least two to three references from the text within each paragraph. You can see how many this person has. That's how many you should have. If you're simply writing, you know, and, and supporting your argument without quotations, you're not doing as strong of a job as you could. So you need frequent quotations, and they need to all fit into your writing perfectly. So there's um, some help in arguing. Again, really focus on the information that helps you uh, develop your um, analysis essay. In your future courses, you're really going to hone in on argumentation and research and all that kind of stuff. But for right now, I just want you to focus on the analysis information and, um, and really try to focus on that. Um, to develop those skills, just kind of baby steps. You can work with a little bit of information, but it's all going to come from the text. So hopefully, hopefully this all makes sense. Hopefully it um, comes together as you start writing. So just let me know if you have any questions about anything.